Okay, so I am out at. Okay, so I am out at uh, a music pavilion, a uh, music venue in Charlotte, North Carolina, and this is the Jimmy Buffett concert. I've never been to a Jimmy Buffett concert to preach. Usually, when we get uh, get here this early, I'm about it's about two and a half to three hours before the event starts. Usually, it's a ghost town for about the first half hour, 45 minutes or so. Uh, I got here over th about three hours before the concert's going to even start, and the traffic is packed. And uh, they've set up like um, it's set up like uh, college, like college or pro football has uh, all the tailgate parties in the parking lot can't really see it from where I am here. I walk past it all. The parking lot is absolutely jam-packed with people already having tailgate parties and everything like that. And it's, it, like I said, it's two and a half, three hours before the concert. So it uh, should be a good night. We'll see. Who is ready for a higher standard? Who's ready? At the bad daddy alert again. Bad daddy alert again. Yeah, horrible. Jimmy Buffett. Okay, please explain to me. Uh, you're you're paying for you're paying to go listen to a man to sing it. No, you don't. Yeah, you don't want to hear it because you know. Here's a dad taking a little daughter into a concert where a man sings "Let's Get Drunk and Screw." He told me not to say the words "Let's Get Drunk and Screw," but he's going into a concert where a guy will sing it. Don't blame your little daughter. Don't blame your little daughter when she doesn't say no to a boyfriend who tells her, let's get drunk and screw. Bad daddy alert. That dad took his little daughter to a concert where a man sings, let's get drunk and screw. You know, the guy was under a little conviction because he told me, don't say those words, don't say those lyrics. He knows it's wrong for his little daughter to hear lyrics, uh, hear the words, let's get drunk and screw. But he paid tickets, paid money for tickets, and brings his little daughter, his wife and his little daughter, to a concert. And he's going to cheer when the man, when Jimmy Buffett sings Let's Get Drunk and Screw, he's going to be sitting right there next to his little daughter, and they're all going to be cheering for it. You know, don't, don't blame little Susie when she comes home drunk and pregnant at 14 when you take her out to a concert where a man sings about uh, drunkenness, premarital sex, extramarital sex, just basic worldliness and carnality. Big old Wicked. Margaritaville party outside of, uh, outside of Lot's door in Sodom and Gomorrah. And then what happened? Fire and brimstone rained down and destroyed every last one of them. Only three people made it all the way out completely alive from those populated cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. I wonder how many people, if Jesus Christ returned tonight, how many people would make it out alive, uh, not receiving God's wrath from a Jimmy Buffett concert. I'll bet maybe a couple of people on the janitorial staff and some of the concession stand workers, maybe they're true Christians, they'll make it out alive. Oh, uh, but every last one of you Jimmy Buffett fans, what's that? I am. Yeah, wait till Judgment Day. You don't like judgment from a middle-aged guy standing next to a road. Wait till you meet Jesus Christ, and you have to give an account. You have to give an account. Uh, you're gonna meet. You're gonna meet him. It's it's not either or. It's both and. You're gonna receive his wrath. You could have received his grace and his mercy, but you want to live like the world. You want to live carnally like the world. So you're going to receive his wrath. That's just it. Got another bad daddy alert. Another bad daddy alert taking your son and daughter and wife into a concert where a man is going to sing the song, Let's Get Drunk and Screw. Hey, uh, what are you going to do if some guy tells your daughter, Let's Get Drunk and Screw? Are you going to cheer for him like you cheer for Jimmy Buffett when he says that? What are you going to do? You go okay with your little boy going around to girls saying, Let's Get Drunk and Screw? What a bunch of horrible fathers and mothers I see in this crowd. I understand all you uh, old people with one foot in the grave. You uh, grew up listening to Jimmy Buffett. A lot of old people here with one foot in the grave going to this concert. But what a shame. What a shame when I see parents bringing young children into a concert where a man's going to sing a song called Let's Get Drunk and Screw. You paid money. You paid money. You paid money and brought your little daughter and your little sons 
to a concert where a guy sings, let's get drunk and screw, and you're going to cheer and applaud, give him a standing ovation for singing, let's get drunk and screw. Oh, and then what are you going to say when your little daughter's drunk and pregnant at 14? Yeah, don't blame her, Dad. Don't blame her. What's that? Doesn't use the words what? What's he say? He doesn't say, what? oh, the crowd says it? Was he just have the crowd say it? Oh, oh, that's much better, isn't it? That, what? Oh, that. Oh, how much better? Oh, okay. So now he inculcates all of you into his debauchery. So instead of Jimmy Buffett, so instead of Jimmy Buffett saying the words "Let's get drunk and screw," he lets all of you say it, so that you're all guilty, huh? Oh, okay. How nice of him. How kind. That's ridiculous. More bad you got parent alerts. Bringing young daughters into a into a concert where a guy sings let's get drunk and screw you okay with that grandpa you okay with some boyfriend she she probably had never heard that before that you just said oh well you're going into a concert where a guy sings it so you but you're the second person you hypocrites you're the second person who got angry at me for saying let's get drunk and screw in front of your children but you're going into the concert and paying money and cheering for a guy who's actually wrote the song and is going to sing it. What a bunch of hypocrites. What a bunch of hypocrites. Going into a concert, promoting, promoting a guy, singing songs that you say you don't want your kids to hear out here. I wouldn't listen. Yeah. Har, har, har. It's all hilarious. Yeah, Jimmy Buffett sings, come Monday, it'll be all right. Yeah, if you die as a drunken sinner this weekend, come Monday, it's not going to be all right. Yeah, you get drunk. I'm Saint Buddy, and I'm out here to tell you to stop your sinning and repent. That's right. Am I wrong? Am I wrong for judging? Am I? That's a judgment. Telling me I'm wrong for judging is a judgment. Now, you say I'm wrong for judging, which is a judgment. So now you're judgmental and a hypocrite. What's that, Grandpa? What's that? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Beat me up, Grandpa? Yeah. No, I'm not. No, I want the people of the world to see what the Jimmy Buffett uh, concert fans are really like. Let's take a look at what the parrot heads are really like. That many years, decade after decade after decade of sucking back margaritas and brews and uh, sex outside of marriage, gonorrhea. I think I think gonorrhea and syphilis have riddled your brain with problems. So, so how about grace? Talk to me about grace. Uh, yeah, the Bible says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we are to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. What is grace? The Bible tells us what grace teaches us. The Bible tells us that grace teaches us to live soberly and righteously and godly right now. You aren't doing any of those things. You're not living soberly, you're not living righteously, and you're not living godly in this present age. That's right, yeah. A judgment is not a sin. Where, where's the Bible say judgment is a sin? Jesus told his disciples, when you judge, judge with righteous judgment. Yeah, I'm sure if some girl inside, yeah, yeah, if some drunk girl inside the concert says, hey, you're good looking, you're not going to say, you can't judge me. Yeah, if some, some drunk girl inside the concert tells you you're good looking, you're not going to say, you're not allowed to judge me. Yeah, when you put your 700 selfie, let me, let me don't touch me, Grandpa. Me, no, get away from me, Grandpa. Grandpa I'm about ready to oh, teach you. Yeah, go to jail. Spend the, spend the jail. Uh, yeah, hey, uh, Is that what you want? No, I don't. I don't. I want you to, go, I want you to repent and go to heaven. But the police are right behind you. So if you want to spend concert night in jail, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll find a new boyfriend there. Yeah, I did. I told you what grace, what the Bible says about grace. You have, you don't have God's grace going into this concert. You don't have God's grace going into this concert. You don't have any grace going into this concert. You know what, you people, this is why the modern American church is so pathetic and powerless in America. Because a bunch of phony Christians coming out here to a Jimmy Buffett concert want to talk about being under grace while they're out getting drunk. What is What does the Bible say about grace? What does the, oh yeah, the people outside of Noah's Ark were having a good time. Uh, the people in Sodom and Gomorrah were having a good time outside of Lot's door. 
Oh, all those, all those sodomites outside of Lot's door, they were having a good old time. They were like, did you see those two beautiful men? Bring those two beautiful men out here so that we can rape them. That's what the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were having. Big old Margaritaville party going on outside of Lot's door. Oh, but God rained down fire and brimstone on them. Fire and brimstone down on the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, you think you guys can't handle judgment from a middle-aged guy standing next to a street. Wait till you kneel before the Lord Jesus Christ. Why am I here? Because this is where the sinners are. I'm here because this is where I could find the most sinners collected in one spot in a short period of time. What's that? I'll see you in hell. No, you won't see me in hell. No. Uh, you, we'll probably be able to see you from hell. The Bible actually talks about there's a great, uh, there's a great gulf fix. You may be able to see me from hell. Uh, I don't know the exact, you know, the rich man and Lazarus. One was in paradise and one was in hell, and uh, they could see each other. Um, what did what did he want? What did that rich man in hell want? He wanted someone to go and warn his five brothers not to go to that horrible place. Did you go home? Leave. Uh, that's what you need to do. Physician, heal thyself. You need to leave and go home. R rip up that ticket. Go home and actually have a Bible study. See, this is what Christianity should look like. This is what Christianity should look like. This is what Christianity should not look like. You gals going to church on Sunday. You gals going to go, well, you come to Yeshua HaMashiach. Your Messiah came 2,000 years ago. We love the Jews. We love the Jews. Come to Yeshua HaMashiach, the Jewish Messiah. Don't touch me, drunkie. Don't touch me. Junkie? Yeah. yeah. Drunkards, see, you're on my list up there. Drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. See, a bunch of, see, you know, you're going to watch Jan, uh, Grandpa Jimmy sing his songs for the 8,000th time. Here's a crowd full of uh, gray hairs, bald heads, pot bellies, everything but the little walker with the uh, te tennis, tennis balls on the end of it. And you guys have one foot in the grave, one foot in the grave, and you're still partying it up, still partying it up like some pagan drunken love fest. It's time for a higher standard. How old are you? Seriously, how old are you? It's time to grow up. Put away the childish things. Paul wrote about that. When I was a child, I thought as a child, act as a child, but when I became an adult, you know, I put away childish things. Time for you all to put away childish things and actually get serious about your soul. Here's one guy, one little guy standing uh, standing by a street who cares more about your eternal soul than you do. How, how shameful is that? Jesus said it would be better it would be better that a millstone be tied around your neck and you be cast into the depths of the sea than to offend uh, than to cause one of his little ones to stumble. Yeah, Jesus is going to replace your little flowery lay with a millstone necklace and throw you into the ocean. It'll actually be better. What he's going to do something far worse than that. You would prefer that. Yes, do you have a question? I do have a question. You, you're a Christian obviously. Uh, I am a she asked if I am a Christian. I know I'm being very subtle about my Christianity, but yes, I am a Christian. Do you yes. Think this is really bringing people to Christ? She wants to know if this is bringing people to Christ. Most definitely. Uh, most people are turned away because they love their sin more than they love obedience to God. So yes, uh, the the Bible says that God's word will not return void. God's word is a fork in the road. And when I tell every Jimmy Buffett fan uh, that uh, you're promoting a guy who promotes worldliness and carnality and sin and you choose to still go into that concert, uh, God's word didn't return void. You just chose to ignore it and harden your heart even more. Oh, but there might be some out here that say, you know what, he's right. The Bible does say that. Jesus does demand a higher standard from us. And they might go home, rip up their ticket, and uh, read the Bible. Who's ready? Who is ready to uh, tear up their ticket, go home, and read that Bible? Are you, sir? You ready to go home, read your Bible?
I already read my Bible, and right now you are clanging gong. Oh yeah, right. You are. You're a, and you're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite that Jesus are, Christ is gonna puke out on you judgment day. You are offending people. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> offending, you yeah, are, yeah. So are, did Jesus. They put him up on a cross. Maybe you didn't get that far in your no, Bible I study. I love him and he loves me. You don't love Jesus but Christ. Jesus do, said, "If you love me, keep my commandments." You're, a you're not keeping you're his commandments, God. and you're a hypocrite that he's gonna puke out on judgment day. Jesus said, "How I." Jesus said to a church. How I wish you were either hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm,